Hi everyone, this is Player 2. And this is Player 1. Hey, we're coming to you with basically an update to yesterday's video that I posted out there about the Switch. Uh, there were some things that I wanted to touch up on and I brought Player 1 here so we can talk to you about some of the, I guess, the specs that have been released and some of the issues with the Switch. So I guess the first thing we're going to talk about uh, that I have on our list here is storage. Basically, if you haven't heard, the Breath of the Wild is going to have a 13 gig uh I wouldn't call it a patch, more like uh, 13... I think that's the actual game. Yeah, that's the actual game. The actual so, game. so it's going to take about 40% of your actual initial storage from the Switch. As you know, the Switch brings 32 gigs of storage onto the actual tablet. So that's what they're saying. But we all know that 32 gigs of storage really doesn't translate to 32 gigs of storage. Usually it's less than that if you take into account the operate, operating system and some other things that they may add. So already off the bat, you're going to have probably close to half, if not maybe a little bit more of your storage lost if you buy the game. All right, so right there immediately, I'm seeing a serious issue. We all know that if you have a PS4 or an Xbox One, you've been dealing with this crap about storage for a while now. But this is even worse. They're offering you 32 gigs, of which their only real launch title that's worth anything is, thir is it 13 gigs? Correct. Their, their launch title, right, so Zelda, is 13 right, gigs. 13 gigs. So if you want to buy stuff from the eShop or vir Virtual Console, which is almost the only way you're going to be able to play a single game on the Switch because there's not much left to buy, you're going to run into issues of space. Now, the funny thing is, you can extend the console, right? With yes, you SD. can. And that, that brings me to the other point. You can extend the console. Um, I've heard of... You can extend up to 512 gigs of storage, but with an SD that's card? with a micro SD card. Micro but that's SD. Okay. that's I think it's unconfirmed. But I know that you can extend at least to 128 gigs of storage, from what I've been hearing from different places. And all this news comes from um, if you guys check it out, Polygon and some other outlets out there. But um, basically, they're all saying kind of the same thing that you can extend it to 128 gigs of storage. It's not too expensive, but it's not really cheap either. Well, if you think you know, about if you it, get it on sale, you can get a card for a. Price well, if you think about it, um, I got this this Black Friday. I got a 128 gig storage SD card for about forty dollars, and that was already half of it off. Um, if you think that the 256 gigs of storage right now is going for around two hundred dollars, if you think of a 512, it's probably going to be almost double that. So that's not really a good price, and that's not really a good start, especially if one game is going to take up. 13 gigs. This is not including, uh, are there patches? Are there going to be updates down the line? Um, I don't imagine Nintendo doesn't really support their games. So I don't know if there'll actually be patches for any of their games. Even though now they're trying to bust out this online pay like Xbox Live wannabe. So maybe that comes into play with the patches. But with that, I mean, it's I mean, not a lot of space. That's no, an it, issue. No, it's not. So you're going to be having to choose between what you put on the, uh, on the actual console. And that's what I'm telling, I was telling player one is that with regards to patches, we don't know anything just yet. So will Splatoon have patches? I mean, these are cartridges that are coming with the console itself. So Breath of the Wild is a cartridge. Why are you having to download 13 gigs from the actual cartridge onto the console? Shouldn't it be running off the cartridge itself? That sounds like poor development. Or it sounds like to me that all you have on the cartridge is an actual key um, or there might be some DRM that you have to go well, online. I, well, that, here's another thing. Have they said yet if you download from online or do you have to just get down from... Like, there's, is it like, is it like an installation like PS4 happens, you know? There's actually no, no information on that. So f for all we know, we're going to find all this out on day one when you install Zelda or when you use the Switch. I mean, for all I know, you could put it on there and it's just like everything else where you put on the cartridge and it has to download. So those are concerns that I have that are valid concerns, I think, and it's going to affect everybody, especially coming from other consoles like um, like the Vita, for example. I love the Vita, but a 64 gig card is the max that I can do. And, and I haven't an been... import. We bought that import. Exactly. And I haven't been able to download a lot of other games because of the space that I have left on it. Plus, Nintendo doesn't really have an account system um, like they have the stupid friend codes and all that so without a real real good account system and online what if you lose those games you're not gonna get them again exactly you know and this I mean? it's not like PSN where you can just go download your games again exactly and this isn't even talking about what if down the line games like Splatoon have maps that you have to download or DLC or even microtransaction I mean come on guys let's not rule this out of the table because this will probably happen um, and even Skyrim is coming so will that have a, a, yeah, a certain if, amount if Zelda Zelda is 13 gigs. How many gigs will Skyrim be? Exactly. So how many gigs other games will be? Now, now here's a... I want to bring this up. Talking about Zelda, let's talk about this issue of resolution.
solution because I don't see a lot of people talking about this and no. I, don't, I don't think this is cool for a console in 2016. No, now you guys need to know this. Zelda, when you're actually playing it on the mobile version where you take it off the dock, it's going to run at 720p. So all the games are going to run at 720p. Which, which is okay, I think, for a tablet. It's okay, it's but it's, it's not great. Because think about the battery life. If it was 1080p, even worse with that horrible battery life. You'd be exactly. really sucking it Exactly. Out. So it's at the very minimal. It's HD, but as the minimal requirements of HD. Now, when you put it on the actual dock, it's up to 1080p not at 1080p. So for example, Breath of the Wild, they've already said that it's going to run at 900p. So you're not going to get it at 1080. Yeah, that's, that's in my opinion, unacceptable. A new console coming out in 2016 that you're still playing this game of 900p, that's that's bullshit, man. It you is, need to at least be at 1080p for these games. There's no reason not to be I mean, at 1080p. I mean, I understand Nintendo's point of view because when you're undocking it, you're using a lot more power. So the system needs to pretty much go backwards or how do you say it? downgrade so that you don't use that much battery. But on the dock, it should be able to at least push a full resolution of 1080. But it is what it is at this point. Now, another point that I wanted to bring up is the type C um, charging. I mean, they keep on emphasizing that you use type C and you can use it while you're playing a game on mobile. When it's undocked, you can plug in your Type-C and charge the tablet. So everything from what I hear coming out is that they're allowing you to charge. They're allowing you to different options to charge this ta this in tablet mode. So it sounds to me like the battery life is not that great. And that brings me up to the ambient light sensor that's on the, on the Switch itself. There's an ambient light sensor that's going to adjust the brightness of the game depending upon, of course, the location where you're at and what room. If you're in a dark room, it's going to lower it probably. And all this is kind of cheats to make the battery last longer. No, well, I, I can say this. Um, I've been playing with the new 3DS and I, the ambient light sensor automatic lighting is horrible in the new 3DS. I can tell you, those of you who, who notice that you're playing a game and all of a sudden it turns dark or turns really bright, they didn't do a good job on the new 3DS. I don't know if they'll do a good job on this. I know for me, I had to just turn it off. But imagine on a system like the Switch where they're saying two and a half, three hours to six, which is really like three hours, if that. At that point, you're going to have a real issue if you have the brightness up. Exactly. And that brings me to the other uh, point that was reported by Polygon. The the Breath of the Wild will actually work up to three hours on the Switch. So don't expect to play Zelda up to six hours. That's the max that you'll be able to play it up to three hours. So if you take everything with a grain of salt, you know how everything is promised now. Oh, you get six hours of battery, but you actually get three to four. So if you get promised three, you might be under three. So don't expect to be playing Zelda for long periods of time. Another gripe that I just noticed when I was looking at um, some of the pictures of the docking station, I noticed there is no ethernet jack on there. There is no way to plug it in directly using an ethernet cable. Now I do understand it brings Wi-Fi, but in today's day and age, that is very cheap not to put a uh, ethernet port on it. Especially for a lot of people that may not have good Wi-Fi in their home or may just want to have Ethernet for all for us I mean, techies. Just, for, just simple security reasons. Ethernet is the way to go. Exactly. And if you know, if you're a techie like me, that I love tech, basically you know that Ethernet is a faster connection than wireless. It's always going to be faster. And more stable. And more stable. So if you're going to be playing this docked at your home, I mean, you're going to end up having less of a connection than somebody using an Ethernet jack. So off the bat, you may also need a an adapter for it um so you're already spending three hundred dollars plus a micro sd card and this is not even including if you have to have a, an external hard drive which they have yet to talk about i mean if these games do take up a lot of space you may be able to use an external hard drive or you may not because we don't know yet See, but that comes back to the issue of games so right now as far as useful games that are even worth thinking about picking up you have just zelda for the first month right more or less so here's the funny part when this console finally gets its legs going in some time around winter let's say all these games come out that supposedly you don't have a release date yet let's just say you have you know the mario zelda the skyrim if you feel like playing a game that's that old already you know and the splatoon and all that at that point i don't see all that fitting on a 32 internal gig so you buy an extra sd card even with the sd card how much uh, how much is that going to roll so because i see these cases like the zelda special edition case it comes with like 20 games but your 20 games don't fit on your sd and apparently they're downloading the games like the ps4 does so at that point every time you 
you play a new game, you have to delete another one and put it on. For the three hours or less that you have the actual stupid console battery, it becomes a nuisance to try to even take it portable. It's not useful. Now that brings me back to another thing about the battery life. With regards to the Joy-Con controllers, how long are they going to last? Because That's right, they haven't said that. Exactly, because these Joy-Con controllers, you take them off and they have their own battery life. So when, when they're disconnected from the actual console and you're playing with the Joy-Con controllers, um, wirelessly they're gonna use battery life so how long do they last do they last half an hour an hour two hours because if the console is lasting between two and a half to six and a half hours at the most and that's in a, a dream world six and a half hours that's how long happen. how long are these controllers gonna last on top of that and every time I, you connect it to charge or charge it'll take even more from the switch exactly because these controllers power. are taking charge from the switch itself so that also worries me again what is the real battery life of the switch and the controllers i also noticed that they're going to be selling an actual controller that you can put the joy cons into and this controller has a charge option on it so they know that this is an issue because the actual controller that you have the adapter that you can put the two joy cons in that comes with a switch that one does not have a battery in it however the one that you can buy for $30 does have a battery in it this is not even including the pro controller so let me think about this so day one you're expected to buy the console 300 bucks in the US sorry if you're in Canada you need some kind of Ethernet adapter you need Joy-Con adapter with battery because you, you don't want it to suck up the, the shitty battery life it has you have to buy the 80 or $90 pro controller and then an SD card for extra storage because you're not gonna have more than a couple games that you can get and this is only if you not counting if you buy it later you gotta start paying the online fee exactly and this is not even counting if you're like us maybe you have some friends and you want to play two players i mean granted the only thing you're going to be able to play at launch is zelda and may and some of those um you know shoot them games that they were Which, showing you by the way i thought they were free when i saw them because they're shitty little app games apparently you're gonna have to pay for them Yes, and come with the console, which is really pathetic. So take that into consideration that if you invite a friend and you want to play that game, you're going to need some Joy-Con controllers for your friend. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, uh, subscribe. If not, let us know and see how we can do better. This is Player 2. This is Player 1 signing out. Thanks for watching.